Uh, thanks. It's great to be here. This is my first time at a, an OpenStreetMap uh, conference, so I'm kind of new to the community. And um, I'm Brian Johnson. I'm the director of analytics um, in, in EarthLab. I plan to give a little bit of an overview of what EarthLab is. It's a new activity at CU, relatively new. It's about two years old or so. And we were initiated under uh, CU's um, Grand Challenge, uh, which kicked off about three years ago, and this is one of the uh, initiatives that they funded. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about what EarthLab is and sort of our approach to um, kind of addressing the challenges with using uh, big data technologies and also applying those uh, in Earth science and using uh, big data from Earth observations, including satellite data and, and ground systems, for example. So, um, as I mentioned, EarthLab was um, started about two years ago in September 2015. Uh, we, we kicked off EarthLab under this uh, Grand Challenge initiative, and it's, um, it's really an Earth System Science Synthesis Center. And uh, what we're trying to accomplish is um, um, take advantage of the strong Earth and social science work that's already being done at the university and try to bring uh, big data technologies and some of the newer approaches uh, for data mining, machine learning, and deep learning techniques and higher order statistical analysis um, to try to uh, uncover uh, new insights, new uh, trends or spatial patterns in Earth, op Earth observations. And we're really focused on trying to understand uh, environmental change and the consequences of those change changes um, so society can better adapt and, man and manage. And um, so we're using a, um, a range of different kinds of observations and in trying to integrate those observations with other information. So, um, so we're more of a consumer of map, maps and map products than actually a producer of those things. But we like, we're, we're learning how to bring in that kind of uh, information uh, together with satellite remote sensing and airborne remote sensing and, and other kinds of data, social media and um, social social economic data to try to to gain insights on environmental change and also impacts, societal impacts. So um, EarthLab uh, has a, a, a director, Jennifer Balch, and the deputy director is Bill Travis. They're both out of the geography department here at CU. And uh, we have a cohort of, of researchers. We have some staff and faculty, graduate students, and a number of uh, undergraduate and postdocs that are, are involved in uh, data-intensive research here on campus. So there's about 30 of us or so, kind of a cohort of researchers, all with similar um, interests in, in research areas and also similar data and analytics challenges. And so EarthLab uh, sort of formed around this idea. And we have these three main sort of components that are, are interrelated and highly integrated. We have um, the data intensive uh, science projects in the research areas. We have an education initiative. And then I'll talk a little bit more about the analytics hub, but that's, that's really primarily focused on, on supporting both the science projects as well as the, um, an, uh, the um, education initiative. And uh, this is where we try to bring both expertise together and data and compute infrastructure to try to facilitate or advance some of these uh, um, scientific research areas. And, and on your right, you'll see um, just an example of the kind of uh, research areas that we're involved in. Uh, for example, we're looking at uh, how ranchers make decisions about drought given their understanding of insurance and uh, how insurance might pay out if they have a loss, what they do about that in terms of selling cattle or buying more feed, uh, to other things like forest health where we're looking at uh, not only forest health, but resilience and recovery after um, the interacting um, disturbances of wildfire, drought, and, and pine beetle, for example. And all of these, of course, have this kind of common theme where we're trying to bring earth observations and new ways of uh, analyzing data to try to make progress, understanding underlying processes and feedback kind of processes within uh, earth system sciences. So as I mentioned, the Analytics Hub is um, really focused on trying to provide and facilitate uh, that research. So we're, we provide both expertise uh, in remote sensing, in data science, uh, computing, and scientific visualization, uh, along with uh, trying to provide data infrastructure. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. 
And in the process of working um, sort of integrated with the science teams and working with them, we developed tools that uh, enable uh, data access and some of the analytics workflow. So some of the transformation of making different data sets work together. And, and we make those uh, data and those tools available uh, more generally, sort of as an accelerator, both within Earth Lab, but also more generally to the Earth Science community. So we put that stuff out on GitHub and, and hoping that, that that'll get picked up and, and used and uh, adapted for other, uh, other research activities. Uh, we have some training as part of the Analytics Hub and we also uh, support the education initiative to try to fill that gap or address that gap in skill and knowledge between big data technologies, coding best practices, and, and, and other things, technologies like Docker containers, as a way to um, build out uh, analytics workflow and how to work with Earth observations, for example. We have a visualization studio that we uh, built up uh, as part of Earth Lab, and it's, um, it's, it's a bit like a decision uh, studio, if you're familiar with that. It has a a number of different displays around the room, but it's a way to bring in uh, a number of different um, people across uh, different sectors, for example, industry, education, federal agencies. Uh, it's a way to explore data and um, explore and visualize different data. And, and the key to that is we have a, a dedicated uh, Viz cluster, we call it, but it's a stack of servers uh, running Sage software, which allows this sort of interaction via a uh, web browser. But um, What's really important there is we can run very complex models in large data sets and can visualize that sort of real time. So it gives us a way to interact with, with data sort of real time and, and a possibility of looking through data and forming new science questions, looking for patterns, doing simple uh, analytics on that. And in the center of this diagram then is a sort of our data and uh, compute infrastructure. So in partnership with the university, uh, we have access to um, uh, uh, research computing, um, high performance computing capabilities, which include supercomputing. We also have a couple of nodes on that um, computing facility that are just Earth Lab nodes, so it gives us some priority. So we have a high performance computing environment we can work in. Uh, we have uh, research um, data infrastructure, we refer to as the PETA library, so we have uh, capability to store large amounts of data. And for us, it's not about just harvesting a lot of data and putting it in our center, but rather um, reaching out into other data repositories. So one of the challenges that we have is most of the Earth observations are, especially those collected by federal agencies, sit in other data repositories. And so we have that challenge of trying to make connections in there, and we may bring subsets or part of those data. We still need a place to stage that and do analytics on it. But the idea is not to curate our own data, but rather to use the other data that's available. And then more recently, we've been trying to uh, move our analytics workflow and also pull our uh, researchers along with us uh, into the cloud because there are some really uh, powerful approaches to uh, scalable computing um, that, that the cloud enables. And it's also, um, I'll talk a bit more about this, but it enables uh, us to have sort of a collaborative and sort of common platform as we try to build up partnerships in federal agencies and in, uh, in industry community as well as across the university rather than pulling people into the high performance uh, computing environment, which has its own environment, we can develop out uh, tools, capabilities, and uh, an analytics kind of environment that's sort of common among different uh, sectors, different partners. So here, this is really, um, I think, a central theme for us, the challenge of working with Earth observations, and I try to represent that here. It's not only the volume uh, of data that's available, uh, for example, NASA has 22 petabytes of, of data products sitting in their archive right now, and it's spread across 12 different data centers, kind of science theme oriented data centers. Uh, and they're uh, growing that archive at about five petabytes per year. And uh, when they get to 2021 or 2022 and launch a couple of more uh, new satellites that are radar um, satellites, the data rate goes just skyrockets. So there's a lot of data not only sitting in the uh, archive today, but also a rapid growth of that. And if we look at what NOAA is doing, of course, in their mission to uh, provide information for weather forecasts in their polar orbiting satellites and geostationary satellites, they're collecting something like 20 ter terabytes of data per day. And so although those are all uh, mission-driven um, data collections, and so they provide um, or define their own data types, they have their own data formats and a set of metadata that goes with that, 
uh, and they're all you know, designed to meet specific scientific objectives or operational needs. There's a tremendous amount of value and reuse in those data sets, and so we're trying to tap those data sets to bring them into new research areas and into new applications. I mentioned that the other challenge, of course, is this data is spread all around to different repositories, and, in, and although I think there's efforts certainly within NASA and within NOAA to bring some of their, their larger and high-value data sets into the cloud, they're still not there, and uh, there's still that challenge of, of trying to bring those data in. Um, and in addition, what we're trying to do is not just use satellite remote sensing, but there are a whole um, number of other ways that observations are collected. So you see in the top right corner there, uh, you know, there's fixed sites, environmental sites constantly collecting data about the environment, or airborne satellites, or uh, airborne sensors that are collecting information, and of course, field studies. And, you know, uh, the other challenge is how do we uh, integrate this heterogene heterogeneous sort of uh, sets of data, both in measurement type and also in format. And also, one of the things we're really striving to do here, rather than build out just a single kind of analytics workflow, we're trying to find new ways to bring scalable compute together with some of these new uh, sort of machine learning frameworks and other software approaches, not, not really um, well understood within the natural sciences or well adopted quite yet, but. Uh, by bringing those together, we can enable open and reproducible science. And there's, there's a number of reasons for why you'd want to do that. And just from a scientific perspective, you want uh, some ability, some process that allows uh, sort of transparency and uh, access to some of the intermediate research and the algorithms and the process used uh, to analyze that data, both for review and to demonstrate the correctness of the results. Uh, but, but also to extend, to use that me those methods and those tools in other research areas and extend them to new research topics. Within Earth Lab, then, it also allows us to build up a, a sort of a capability. We can capture work products, so we can capture tools that are well documented and, and reproducible, as, as well as the scientific narrative that goes along with that. So we understand um, what those tools are, so uh, as part of our kind of I guess business model, we have postdocs that come for a couple of years and move out, and we want to try to capture some of that knowledge, understanding, and capability with an Earth Lab so we can continue to build out capability and knowledge uh, in, in this data intensive kind of work we're doing. And so one of the, one of the things that this means to us is we had, we're trying to adopt, both in the way we do our analytics development, and in a way um, we try to bring scalable compute to the to the problem is to try to use open source software, R and Python, for example, and these tools like Git and GitHub to, as a ways of controlling uh, software uh, versioning, having several people um, work on the same algorithms, for example, and also a repository for software, and then things like Docker containers, which allow us to capture the, the, the uh, processing environment. So it, it, it captures the dependencies as well as the versions uh, in, a, in an environment then that, in principle, is uh, reproducible, so we can uh, deploy that either from the desktop or into the cloud, for example, or give it to somebody else to deploy in their own software environment and still get the same sort of workflow and results. So as part of the analytics hub activity, you know, we're still sort of getting our feet under us, um, trying to understand and, and really how do we uh, leverage and adopt some of these uh, really pretty cool and capable um, both cloud computing technologies, but also some of the software um, approaches that, that I just mentioned. And so we have this opportunity at the university to think, think about uh, a way to strategize on how do we build out this sort of ar architecture or, or kind of compute enterprise. And, and so we have, you know, a lot of our researchers are working on a desktop and we're trying to push them into uh, environments that allow them to scale out their research. So not just, uh, not just to be able to um, do, you know, wait over the weekend, but rather to extend their research uh, to larger data sets or, or longer time frames, for example. And so we're looking at how we interact with the cloud. So in the last couple of minutes that I have here, I just want to touch on a couple of uh, examples of the sort of analytics we're, we've been doing and, and kind of our approach to, uh, to bringing analytics to uh, remote sensing data and, and so on. And this first one represents a, a, a collaboration that we've been involved in uh, with Digital Globe and with Newmont Mining. Uh, Newmont is a gold and silver producer, they, uh, a global company, and uh, they came and asked if there's a, 
some new techniques that we could apply to high, high spatial resolution multispectral imagery. And, and so we looked at how to bring deep learning in, into uh, sort of into this framework. And Digital Globe uh, um, provided the, the imagery. They did the, all the processing, uh, the atmosphere correction, and the georeferencing of 16 bands. Newmont provided some blast hole information that tell us something about the recoverable gold on the ground, and we trained up the, the deep learning algorithm on those, um, on those points. And, uh, and then we looked at uh, predictions of uh, recoverable gold in, in those regions within uh, the Cripple Creek Mine, which is here in Colorado, uh, to see how well it was doing. So we used 60% of those ground points to train the algorithm and 40% of those ground points as a validation or test for the algorithm. And, and we're sort of in that 65 to 70% accuracy uh, category. But you can, see, you can see the yellow represents high high values of recoverable gold. So it, it allows a way to not only see what's going on in that mine, but uh, the plan here is to think about how we might extend this to other regions and other mines uh, to see if we can't predict or find gold from space. The last example is an example that um, one of our student interns, Jeremy Diaz, has been looking at. And what he's interested in doing is providing, um, using the machine learning framework, and apply that to predicting tornado economic impacts. And uh, of course, there's been a lot of work in trying to predict the, um, uh, the occurrence of tornadoes. But more recently now, people are, trying to, are interested in trying to understand the damages associated with those and document those damages. And so there's built up now uh, some data um, about the social and economic impact of, of tornadoes, as well as using a, the a National Weather Service's uh, storm data database, which characterizes the tornadoes, the intensity, and, and, and other characteristics of tornadoes. And so Jeremy used those, uh, those pieces of information to train up uh, a machine learning algorithm. And, and what you see here sort of changing over time that uh, is the prediction of tornado damage at one, each one of these grid points. And uh, right now it's in January, and it'll, it'll loop through month by month here, and you'll see sort of the geospatial patterns. And that was really the objective here, is to see are there some geospatial patterns uh, related to tornado, tornado damage. And um, of course, this just predicts the, the damage that would occur if a tornado occurred at that location. And so there are some, of course, regions that won't have tornadoes or are very unlikely. So the next step is to kind of lay on the probability of occurrence here so that we get something more akin to a risk map. So I think with that, what I'll do is uh, wrap up. And uh, thank you all for coming. And uh, I guess we'll entertain a, a couple of questions, maybe. Right back over here. Uh, yes. Are you accepting new graduate students? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 We are. We have. Um, we run about ten um, undergrad students in the internship, and I think we have something like four slots for GRAs, graduate research assistantships, and then of course we we have uh, postdocs that roll over every couple of years, and so there are lots of opportunities to get uh, involved in Earth Lab. Yeah, hang on. Let's get the uh, microphone. I can, can go check the slide. Can, can go back to first slide. Yeah, next one? First slide. First slide. <coughs> that one? Uh, the the uh, GIS program in uh, data intensive first time, not of GIS, cartographic, emotion to be. In no, that that program. I like to program. I like to special. I like to there are a lot of special. I like to. Special. I like to. Yeah. Um, so the I think you're asking what sort of spatial analytics that we get involved in. Uh, uh, with with about training uh, training tools. Oh, that, oh, I see the training. Well, um, so there are two aspects to that training activity. One is uh, in, the, in the education initiative, we, um, Leah Wasser is the director of education. She's developed um, online materials as well as uh, 
managing the internship program. But in addition, uh, she's developed an Earth Data Analytics course for undergraduate and graduate students. And so I think this is about the third year that we've been running that. Uh, and she's also developed a master's, uh, a professional master's certificate. Oh. And this, um, these courses start with um, sort of coding uh, skill, R and Python, and then some of the, um, the concepts of uh, transformation, you know, regrading, reprojection of, of imagery and bringing images together, all the way into sort of getting your, your feet wet in machine learning and applying machine learning to find spatial patterns or temporal patterns. The other part of the data uh, training that the Analytics Hub does is, is data jams to try to up everybody's game in, in coding best practices in, in Docker container and the concepts of using Dockers and things like that. Does, it, does that answer your question? I can't find a mouse. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, you want the email? Gotcha. Yeah, we're going to have to cut it off so we can keep moving forward, but I would encourage us if any other questions for Brian, uh, grab them at the break or in between talks. It'd be great. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thank you.